بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. إن شاء الله I want to keep my comments here very very brief. Um, first and foremost, when we talk about the blessing of Islam, there's a particular story that resonates with me from the time from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, which really demonstrates and illustrates. The beauty of Islam, the blessing of this deen and this religion that we have been blessed with, that we have been granted, that is the greatest of blessings. It's the story of a man by the name of Tufail ibn Amr. He belonged to a tribe called Adaus. This was a fairly large tribe with, you know, about 80 extended families. Right at that time, especially how tribes were structured, you had about 80 khandans, 80 extended families. So it was quite a bit of people, 10 to 15, maybe 20, even 30 people per extended family. So from there, you can estimate how large of a tribe it was. There were a couple of thousand people almost. And he was a leader of his tribe, and he was known as maybe the most intelligent and talented member of the tribe. He was seen to be an intellectual. He was a poet. He was very culturally and socially respected uh, and very articulate. He heard about the Prophet wasallam in the early days of Mecca. He went to Mecca himself to investigate. When he arrived there, he was warned by the leaders of the Quraysh, the opposition to the Prophet ﷺ. They said, don't listen to him. He said, I want to talk to Muhammad ﷺ. I want to hear what he has to say. They said, no, 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 don't listen to him. His words will entrance you. He practices sorcery, magic. He's a poet. He's crazy. He's possessed. They said all these terrible things about the Prophet ﷺ. And they said, don't listen to him. Because if his words fall into your ears, he will put you under his spell. And he said, I don't know why, but I became so intimidated by what they were saying. And this sounds very familiar to us today. We're constantly being told that no, 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 no. Be careful. Don't say this. Don't do that. Right? And it's given all types of labels to be called extreme or conservative or fundamentalist, to be too hardcore, to be too strict, to be too harsh. And all these people will criticize you and all these bad things will happen to you. But no, Allah and His Messenger وسلم, are telling you something else. So, same way Tufail says, I got intimidated by them. Just like a lot of us get intimidated today. That I'm not going to practice a part of my deen or religion. I'm not going to confess what I believe in. Because of the intimidation. So he says, I stuffed my ears with cotton. I stuffed my ears with cotton. So I wouldn't come across him. And then he says, one day when I was at the Haram, at the Kaaba. And I saw the Prophet ﷺ there and I looked at him and I recognized from his face. This is the face of an intelligent, honorable, trustworthy person. This is not the face of a liar. This is not the face of a charlatan. This is not the face of somebody who is making trouble. He doesn't look troublesome. He looks peaceful. So he says that I took the cotton out of my ears and I followed him to his home. And I asked him, please share your message with me. And he recited the Qur'an to me. And in that moment, I knew that I was interacting with the truth. So I became Muslim. And I spent some time with the Prophet ﷺ. And then he told me, go back to your home. Go back to your town. Go back to your village. And share this message with your people. He said, but I... See, there's a, there's a point that I'd like to make before I continue the story. In terms of accommodating people, in terms of being more approachable, being more accommodating, being more friendly, 
There are people that will tell us that our deen or our religion or our message or what we believe in needs to change. And we will completely and totally reject that. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran is 100% perfect. It is the truth. It is the haqq. What there is no guidance better than the guidance of the Quran. There is no example better than the example of the Prophet. ﷺ. Never compromise your faith, never compromise on what you believe. But what can we change? We can change how we talk to people, we can change how we behave with people, how we interact with people. That's where we should learn better character. That's where we should learn to be more generous. That's where we should learn to be more kind, to be more emotionally intelligent. But do not alter, do not change your deen and your religion for anything. There are a lot of voices, even in the Muslim community, on the fringes of the Muslim community, that are calling for reform and change of our religion, that want to reinterpret and revisit what we believe in. No, 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 we will not entertain that. We don't need to. Because there are the ideas of man, there are the ideas of human beings, and then there is the revelation from Allah Himself. It is the thoughts of the creation and the truth from the Creator. And so Tufail, he goes back to his people, but he's very harsh with them. He says, either become Muslim or I cannot deal with you. They say, okay, we choose not to deal with you. So he got very like upset. He comes back to the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ says, what are you doing back here? I told you to go back, live with your people and share Islam with them. And he says that, in the dosa, in the dosa, غَلَبَتْ عَلَيْهُمُ الزِّنَا khabar." They are addicted to fornication and, and, and intoxication. They're quote unquote bad people. عَلَيْهِمْ Make dua that Allah destroys them, O Messenger of Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ raised his hands to make dua. And the Sahaba say that when we saw him raise his hands, we said, Inna dawsan qad halakat. Dawsa is dead. Because the Prophet is going to pray against them. But when the Prophet ﷺ opened his mouth, the words came out, Allahumma mahdi dawsan. One narration says he said it three times. Allahumma mahdi dawsan wa'ti bihim. Allahumma mahdi dawsan wa'ti bihim. Allahumma mahdi dawsan wa'ti bihim. Oh Allah, guide the people of dawsan, bring them to Islam, bring them to me, bring them here. O oh Allah, guide the people of Dos and bring them here. O oh Allah, guide the people of Dos and bring them here. And Tufail, he then told Tufail, ila qawmik. Now go back to your people. Fadu'uhum ila Islam. Call them to Islam. Warfuq bihim. And be kind and gentle with them. Be kind and gentle with them. That is the blessing of Islam. And what happened? Ten years later, the Sahaba say, Tufail returned. But this time he came to Medina and actually had to come to Khaybar because the Prophet was at Khaybar. But Tufail returned a decade later. But when he came, he had over a thousand people with him. The horizon became covered. They came over the hill and it became completely covered with people. He came with over a thousand people and he said they are all here to become Muslim. And one of those people that came that day to become Muslim was none other than Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. That is the blessing of Islam. That is the blessing of our deen and our religion. So I wanted to conclude here by sharing some of the fruits of our deen and our religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Inna deena indallahi al-Islam. That this way of life, Islam, this is the chosen religion by Allah. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for you. That the Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, فَأَقِمْ وَجْهَكَ لِلْدِينِ حَنِيفًا فِتَرَةَ اللَّهِ الَّتِي فَتَرَ النَّاسَ عَلَيْهَا This is in tune with our inherent nature. This is the natural inclination that Allah has built us with, that Allah has created us with, that we turn towards the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That the religion of Islam is centered and focused around devotion to Allah, 
the oneness and the devotion to Allah. قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد that Allah is only one and only upon him do we rely this religion is a religion that emphasizes knowledge and intelligence اقرأ باسم ربك الذي خلق read in the name of your Lord the one that created it is a religion of honesty integrity and justice and fairness in Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsani wa ita'i dhil qurba Allah commands you towards justice fairness excellence and to respecting your relationships taking care of the people that are given to you this is a religion that does not involve compulsion we do not compel we do not force our will upon to others this is a religion in which Allah has removed hardship Allah has removed hardship from you in this religion this is a religion of balance it's a religion that grants you honor that Izza, honor belongs to Allah and His Messenger and to the believers. And this is a religion of beautiful, noble, honorable character. Where the Prophet ﷺ says, I was sent to perfect and to complete noble character, good character, honorable behavior. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to practice Islam properly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us consistency upon our faith consistency upon our religion and may Allah protect us from the corruption that is being introduced upon this community may Allah protect it from that corruption Ameen Ya Rabbil Alameen Jazakumullahu Khairan Wassalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh